On this episode of History Hunters, Jeff and Sarah wrap up the third installment of their visit to Virginia City, Nevada, as they check out the historic Mackey Mansion. The oldest building in Virginia City, the brick structure dates back to 1860 and was home to the famous Hearst family before it was inhabited by John Mackey, one of the Bonanza Kings who raked in millions of dollars in silver mined from the Comstock Lode. Jeff moves up D Street to see if the Mackey Mansion is open for tours. This is the McKay Mansion. It was built in 1860, and the first occupant was George Hearst, who was the father of William Randolph Hearst, the newspaper guy. In the 1880s, this was also the Golden Curry Mining Company, and inside they had a vault. And uh, in the 1880s, two guys decided they were gonna go in there and blast their way and get the gold bullion and the money that was stored in there and they ended up dying because they didn't figure on a armed guard in there. When Virginia City burned up in 1875, uh, George Hurst had moved out of here. John McKay lost his home in that fire and he decided to buy this house here. And it is now known as the McKay Mansion. A lot of people say, say it's haunted, but I say it's all a bunch of hogwash because I don't believe in ghosts. And there's these buggies that look like they're all pretty much torn apart. of Nevada, stating that this was once the office for the Gould and Curry Mining Company. This talks about being the residence of John McKay, one of the wealthiest men in Nevada, made a lot of money with the Comstock load. This talks about the Bonanza Kings, uh, John McKay being one of them. The McKay family arrived with John at age nine in New York City from Ireland in 1840. A decade later, he moved to California. Hi. How you doing? Is it worth seeing? Absolutely. Is it? Yeah, it's very good. Um, we're the only mansion up here that still does the tours. Okay. And we're number five, the most haunted. <laughs> and the money goes back into the. That's funny you say the... that because I just said on my <clears throat> my camera here that I don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> that's okay. I tell people if you don't believe that's all right, we can stick with the history. Yeah. So it's up to you. I forgot to mention that Johnny Depp used this house for the filming of Dead Man. I believe it was Dead Man in 1995. There's a dead man on that coach. So Mr. Uh, Mackey, we call him the Bill Gates of the 1800s, and his partners and himself are always known as the Silver Kings or the Bonanza Kings of Virginia City. He had three business partners, and their names were James Fair, James Flood, and William O'Brien. James Fair's daughters built the famous Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco with the money they made right here in Virginia City. He was one of the four Bonanza Kings. James Flood built the Flood Mansion and Flood Building in San Francisco. And his uh, third partner, William O'Brien, he died of a lung ailment right after they hit the big Bonanza, so he did not get to enjoy the spoils. So this white rock here is your quartz. But do you see the gray part, how it sparkles? Mm -hmm. So those are your silver veins. Mm -hmm. So to get the silver out of these rocks, they'd crush them into a powdery substance and put them into a smelting pot. They would use very toxic chemicals and heat. When they heated it up, it would separate, and then they could pour it into the molds that made the bars. Now, if you guys look in here, you'll still see the silver attached to the walls. Mm -hmm. That thing got a lot of use. Isn't that crazy? I don't like to touch it because of the chemicals that they use. Somebody told me they're still embedded in that. So it's kind of crazy. Now, they fully restored this room exactly to period in 1990. They did the ceiling paper, the wallpaper, the drapes, the carpets, the door finishings over here. And they also added a pellet stove back here for efficiency. Uh, the coal burning stove doesn't burn as clean as that. And we also didn't want to put any more wear and tear on the stove but it's pretty amazing. Mr. Mackey purchased this in 1875 when he moved in here. We have the receipt locked up in the, count, uh, in the cabinet in the next room. All of the lights guys are original. They all started as gas. The little knobs on the bottom were to adjust the flame. 
and Thomas Edison was here to switch them over to electricity in the mid-1880s. No one knew really who he was because the technology was still on the verge of being figured out. And Alexander Graham Bell, same thing, on a different occasion was here to do our phone. Both of those gentlemen, when they were done, ate dinner at our table downstairs. We still have the original table. You guys will get to see that. Grant has stayed here multiple times and also ate downstairs. And everyone says he looks like a bum in that photo. And uh, I think his wife looks a little worse than he does. This is Julia here. Uh -huh. Bandits wouldn't know. The metal uh, door hung behind there. See how this door goes inward and that yes. one's outward? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, that vault is constructed of granite, cement, and brick. And I'm going to open it up for you. Now, in 1883, two men tried to rob the vault. They didn't know there was an armed guard in there. Both of those men were shot in the chest, and they died right there on the floor. We changed the carpet. So, okay. <laughs> so you think they were killed right here? They were. They were. That's documented, but I don't know their names. That must be a lonely job to be stuck in that vault just <laughs> waiting for somebody. I would have rather sat in there than to go down into the ground, though because they would work in temperatures over 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, they could only work 10 minutes at a time, and then they'd be put in cooling chambers with ice labs. And they would also do their entertaining in here, not at the same time, I'm assuming. Oh. <laughs> um, now, guys, the uh, fireplace mantle right here, this is all hand-carved. It was brought over from England. It's all English tiger oak. And the man that did it did three that we know are famous. One is here. One is in the White House, and one is in Thomas Jefferson's house in Monticello. A mirror from the 1800s shouldn't look that good. It should look yellowed, tarnished, scratched, warped, yeah. and chipped, because they were backed with the mercury and silver. This is a diamond dust mirror, and you might have to come closer, but here you go. Sparkle. Oh, Can you wow. see it? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So yeah. this is a very rare and expensive yeah. process. And let me tell you, we have three or four of these mirrors in Virginia City. Ours is the only one with the gold leaf frame. It's from Paris, France. It's been hanging here since 1874, and it has been deemed priceless and irreplaceable. They had two boys, William and Clarence, and William was killed in a steeplechase race in Paris when he was just 25 years old. Their youngest son, Clarence Mackey, on his wedding day right here. The little girl with her head turned is Ellen. Now, Ellen started running around with a Jewish song composer, and she really upset her dad because they were Irish Catholic, and that was a huge scandal. She got disinherited and disowned for eloping with none other than Irving Berlin. Oh, oh, the man that wrote God Bless America, yeah, White Christmas, putting oh, on the ropes, no business like show business. And she stayed married to him for 63 years until 1988 when she died, and Berlin died the next year at the age of 101. And the two chairs here, Mrs. Mackey did those in honor of Grant's presidential election in 1869. She was a seamstress, a very talented one. The stars are all hand embroidered. The tour moves to the second floor bedroom quarters. Mr. Mackey's bedroom, I thought it was McKay, but it's Mackey. So we're told this toilet is valued at $10,000 there because of the gold leaf embellishments. But for a rich family, the Mackey's bathroom has a somewhat primitive feel to it. Well, it's amazing to think that the children who played in this room grew up and died a long time ago. Youth is certainly very fleeting, isn't it? Wow, this is the view out of one of the children's bedroom windows, Virginia City out there, 2019 style. So we're told this was Mrs. McKay's bedroom and it was not unusual for married couples to have separate bedrooms back then. The story is that Alexander Graham Bell himself came to install this phone system in the mansion because apparently he was friends with the McKays. If there are so many ghosts like some claim, they certainly haven't materialized on this visit. So we're theorizing that the cord going over the door sill and up the wall here is the telephone line that was actually placed here by Alexander Graham Bell, but who really knows? 
It's been said by the tour guide that this dining table saw guests including Mark Twain, Alexander Graham Bell, Thomas Edison, and even President Grant. They all ate over this table. I'm sure they came out here to have a smoke. I'm sure Mark Twain came out here to smoke because he smoked like a chimney. And I think Grant did too. Grant smoked cigars. In fact, Grant died of throat cancer. What did you think of the tour of the Mackey Mansion? Oh, interesting. And all along I've been saying McKay Mansion. Mackey? Well, it looks like it's spelled the same way. The Mackeys came to Virginia City in 1859 and left in 1895. John Mackey was worth an estimated $100 million when he died in London in 1902. His body was laid to rest in a massive mausoleum in the Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, New York, where the remains of his son, John Jr., were also placed. They were joined by John's widow, Marie, who died in 1928 at the age of 84. Sarah and I left Virginia City exhausted from our extensive one-day trek, but also immensely appreciative that so many of the buildings of long ago have been preserved.